Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good morning, brothers and sisters. We thank God for another day the Lord has brought us. And then today, especially Sunday, February 27, we thank God for making it possible for us that we are going to worship him together with the rest of the saints. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, receive all the glory and honor, praise and thanksgiving be unto you. For you are the Lord that have made it possible for us to rise from bed. Thank you for the sweet sleep you have granted unto us, whom you love. Be with us as we look into your word. Speak to us by your spirit. Grant us understanding and the grace to live by your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today we are going to read the gospel as recorded by St. John chapter 4 from verse 19 to 26. John chapter 4 verse 19. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain. But you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Woman, Jesus replied, Believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know. For salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshippers will worship the Father in the spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. God is spirit and his worshippers must worship in the spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know that Messiah called Christ is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, I am he. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The topic for this morning is titled, The Domain of Worship the domain of worship. As Bible students, we are conversant with the story before us, the conversation between Jesus and the woman of Samaria. And then this portion is centered on the true place or venue for worshiping God. That's the whole issue. Why the attention of the woman was on earthly location. Then Jesus expressly pointed out that the domain, location or venue, as far as he's concerned and from now on, as Jesus said, is not on location, is not on venue. But Jesus pointed out something that is very, very important. The type of worship that transcends, that calls across, that is over and above the physical location. And that is seen in verse 23 and 24. Jesus pointed out something that is very, very important. And we are going to look at it. But before then, Jesus said in verse 22, You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know. For salvation is from the Jews. If you go back to the memory land. How did the Samaritans involve? Who are the present occupants in Samaria? As at the time Jesus was speaking. If we go back to the Old Testament in 2 Kings chapter 17 from verse 24 
He said, the king of Assyria brought people from Babylon, Kuta, Ava, Hamath, and Shepavian, and settled them in the towns of Samaria to replace the Israelites there. So there was a resettlement. The present people that were occupying that land, the Israelites were taken away from there. And a foreign people from various nations and cultures were brought in to settle. And then this now gave rise that the people now started to worship whatever they found. Then there was a report sent to the king that the people that you place in the land of Samaria, that the gods of that land have sent lions to devour them. And then that because they don't know the culture and the way of worship of the God that owned that place. So the king gave an order that a priest that was in Ezra should be relocated to come and settle and teach them how to worship God. So the king, the priest now started to teach them how to worship God. That you can see in verse 28. Now... In, the, in that same place, you will now find out that the people went on to serve their various gods. Then what happened? When you read verse 32, it says, They worshipped the Lord, but they also appointed all sorts of their own people to officiate for them as priests in the shrines at the high places. They worshipped the Lord, but they also served their own gods in accordance with the customs of the nations from which they had been brought. Then the last of the whole thing about those people was in verse 41. It says, even while these people were worshiping the Lord, they were serving their idols. To this day, their children and grandchildren continue to do as their ancestors did. And so this was the situation of Samaria as at the time of Christ. So he was now telling the woman of Samaria, look, you Jews, you Samaritan, worship what you don't know. The issue about worshiping God in spirit and in truth, you don't know it. You are worshiping something aberration, something that you just gathered anything and started to worship. There is a mix-up in your worship. And then Jesus now said in verse 23 and 24, Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshippers will worship the Father in the spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. God is spirit and his worshippers must worship him in the spirit and in truth. So Jesus is saying that the essential in worship according to the Lord is not the place per se, but is how you worship God. And he said it should be in spirit and in truth. What does it mean to worship God in spirit? It means that we worship God from the spiritual drive and depth of your soul, seeking the most intimate communion and fellowship with God, seeking the most intimate communion and fellowship with God. Number two, it means that we worship from the spiritual core of our lives and being, trusting and resting in God's acceptance, love and care. These are the two essential things when we talk about worshiping God in spirit and in truth, especially we are looking at in spirit. God is spirit. So our worship with God and our relationship will be in spirit. It is not based on carnal or physical things. If you miss it, being filled with the Holy Spirit, then you are not worshiping at all. You may end up worshiping yourself or worshiping the environment you found yourself. Now, what does it mean to worship God in truth? That means that as God dictates, we worship God as he dictates. In the right and true way. So when we talk about truth, it has to do with what God says. How do we worship God? He said you have to worship God through his son, Jesus Christ. 
anything outside this is not a true worship. Number two, it means insincerity. Not coming from a kind of a half-heartedness with wandering mind and sleepy eyes. One leg there, one leg the other way. No. It is not coming to peep. You don't peep God. You don't peep into him. It's not a try and lock. You come with being resolute. Being sure that you are coming to worship God as he directs. Anything outside this is not true worship. We can understand that in Exodus chapter 32. When Aaron molded the golden calf, he called the children of Israel, come and worship. This is your God. Behold your God who saved you from Egypt. They were singing the song. They have been singing in the temple or in the tabernacle. It was Aaron himself, the priest, leading. And they were dancing and all those things. But their dancing and singing does not have nothing to do because the object of worship is not God. They were worshiping a false God. Though they were singing and in the temple of God. So it's not the venue, but it is which spirit are you contacting in your worship? And then is it according to the prescriptions of God? So we have seen it very clear here that it is very, very important who is leading. Is he a man truly of God or somebody that just came up overnight? Who called him? Does that person know God? And then... What is the background? What is the foundation? Is it founded in Christ? So the people of Samaria and then the Israelites here in the wilderness, we are just doing something they don't know. And Jesus is now telling us the true way. So look at what is happening in our time now. Considering the various places that emerge as places of worship. And then do they worship God? Some people consider, ah, they, they know how to sing, they know how to dance. All these things do not characterize true worship. It has to be by the Spirit. And that Spirit has to be the Spirit of Christ. And then it has to be true, genuine, sincerity of heart. How do we worship God in sincerity today? Do we, after going to worship with other Christians, and we can say of a truth that truly, I have worshipped God in the sincerity of my heart. That is something that Jesus has told us, that that is the yardstick of worship. In the domain of worship, what counts is, is the Spirit of God there? One. Two, is it in truth? Is it that, that which is acceptable to God? It can be acceptable to men, but God can just turn his back and say, I'm not interested. Just like he did with the people of Israel. I pray that it will not be our portion. So that we will not be deceived by the craftiness of men from satanic kingdom. Rather, we will base our worship as Jesus has said here. And what is the reason? He said the reason is that the Father seeks men everywhere to worship him in spirit and in truth. Because he created us. God is our creator. So he demands worship. He demands us to worship him and we cannot worship him anyhow. He is God. So he has laid the standard and what is needed for acceptable worship in spirit. That is to say, you must have the Holy Spirit alive and directing you. And then two, it has to be in truth. No haphazard commitment. It is that you worship God with all your being. All your being. It's not uh, this way, that way, no. No backup. God should be the center and center. And then if you do that, then the Lord will accept your life. And you remember that worship is service. So it is not only going to a place to sing and jump and read and study the scripture. Your life is a, your service as a man, as a woman counts. So see what you are doing as worship to God and then do it in spirit as unto the Lord and do it in truth. The Lord himself will sincerely bless us.
we pray that it will be a portion that will be numbered among those who worship God in spirit and in truth. This is our prayer and sincere desire in Jesus' name. Amen. So we, we, we note that in, in summary that worshiping God that is not based on obedience is not true worship. It has to be obedient. The obedience has to be there. And then serving God has to be there. Some people, they know God, but they don't serve him. Service is very important. So may the Lord grant us this grace in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. Father, deliver us from deceptive places of worship and grant us grace to worship you in spirit and in truth in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, today is a day of worship, a day your people will go to various places to worship. May we worship you acceptably. Release your spirit afresh unto us so that our service today will be laid and controlled by your spirit that it may please you to release your blessings abundantly unto us. Thank you, gracious Father. Be thou exalted. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, beloved of the Lord, for your time. I still encourage you to tune in, same time, same station, tomorrow. God bless you. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.